Okay, now for the fun part. We'll be looking at the infrared images like this one to see heat losses in the walls that we insulated yesterday. Understand that infrared cameras record images based on heat rather than light. That means that different temperatures show up as different colors. For example, my face shows up much warmer than my clothing. Or if I touch this wall momentarily, it will warm up enough to show up using the infrared camera. Well, it's fairly cool this morning, about 35 degrees, so we should be able to see some of the differences in these wall cavities. I think we'll find that some are very obvious, while some may be a little more subtle. For these first two cavities, we had bats that were too short. For one cavity, you'll recall we installed the bat, leaving a gap at the bottom. For the second cavity, we cut and fit a small piece to properly fill it out. You can clearly see the difference here. Look at this cold spot at the bottom of the cavity on the left. That's the result of not taking the time to cut and fit a piece at the bottom. This cavity, on the other hand, has a bat that was too long. Rather than cut the bat to the proper length, we chose to simply tuck it in at the bottom. This resulted in a less than perfect fit that will allow the cold to seep in. Notice the gap here on the right. Electrical boxes are always going to show up as cold spots in the walls. Even when properly insulated, there's still less insulation in that area than the rest of the wall. If we're able to get one inch of foam or, or fiberglass behind the wall, we still have something like R4 instead of R13. But if we look at these two outlets, we do see a difference in the results. This outlet, which was foamed behind and around, looks considerably better than the second outlet, which was not properly insulated. Notice the cold air pouring down the wall below this box. Now let's look at the effects from cavities that are too wide or too narrow. Recall that this cavity was wider than our standard bat, so we tried to stretch the facing and flanges a little to cover the gap. The result is cold strips along the edge of the bat where the cavity was not properly filled. While the building inspector might miss this because it's hidden by the facing, someone with an infrared camera would spot it immediately. As more homes get certifications like Energy Star, for example, they'll be closely examined using infrared cameras like this one. These were the narrow cavities, about 11 inches wide. For the one on the left, I cut and fit the bat, and for the one on the right, I just stuffed the full bat into that spot. You can see some cold spots in the cavity on the right. This is a result of gaps caused by wadding the bat into the cavity. These two cavities compared fast bat to a standard inset stapled bat. They both appear to insulate very well. If anything, the fast bat on the left may be a little bit better because it fills out the cavity just a tad better, and there's no puckering of the facing along the edge where it was stapled. This is a very common occurrence, a cavity that, that is just a couple inches wide. If you grab a piece of scrap and just stuff it in, this is what you get. We see very uneven temperatures along the strip. Clearly, there are a lot of gaps as a result of not taking the time to cut and fit properly. This is a similar situation. These triangular spaces take a little extra care to cut and fit properly. We can see a difference between the space on the left, where we wadded a piece of scrap, and the space on the right, where we cut and fit with a little more care. Recall that we had a thin bat in the cavity on the left. The R13 bat used in that cavity was less than full thickness. This results in less than the nominal R value and also provides a space for cold air to circulate. While it's a little subtle, we can see a difference between these two cavities. The one on the left with the thin bat is losing heat as compared to the one on the right with the full thickness. On these two spaces, we installed the insulation around wiring. On the left, we just installed over the wire, while on the right, we split around the wire. While we can't see the effect of this using infrared, we know without question that we're only getting about R7 in that spot instead of R13. It does make a big difference, even though we can't see it with the infrared camera. On the narrow 5-inch cavity, we just plain didn't insulate it. As expected, we see a big difference. In fact, with this example, you can even see it clearly from the outside of the house. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this today. We've had a lot of fun making this. And of course, we've got another series of videos with the CEP series that show exactly how to install insulation right. But today we focused on mistakes in the walls and the effect that has on the homeowner. I think we saw some differences that were very dramatic and some that were pretty subtle. But even those that are subtle and small have a big impact over the next 30, 40, or 50 years for the homeowner. So think about that in your next job.